Right, so I'm James, I'm from an agency called Parallax. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview about what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, so I'm going to give you a brief overview of what a digital agency is, if you don't already know. Um, a little bit about how Parallax came to exist. The kind of job roles that we have in a digital agency. Uh, the kind of work that you, that you end up doing in an agency. And then finally, I'm going to talk about why and how you should get involved in digital. So we're going to start off with what is a digital agency. So it's kind of a broad term for various kinds of companies that involve digital. So it could be a photography agency, it could be doing videography, marketing, that kind of thing. Um, they come in all different shapes and sizes. My agency is called Parallax. Um, and we are quite a dev heavy agency. We've been going almost 10 years now, if you can believe it. I don't even look that much older than that 2010 pic there, do I? But um, we do all sorts of stuff, um, mostly iPhone apps, websites, that kind of thing, but all kinds of stuff that you'd really enjoy if you got into the tech industry. So just a little bit about how we started. So. I started off coding when I was quite young. Um, I used to program a language called uh, GW Basic. Uh, I don't know if anyone has heard of that. Um, but we had a, like an old hand-me-down computer, and it didn't ship with any software or anything. So I just used to have to write it from scratch if I wanted to learn anything uh, or, or do anything. Um, from there, I managed to get a job at a small agency in York. Um, just basically putting interactive CD-ROMs together. This was about 15, 16 years ago, um, back in the sort of flash days. Um, from there, we, um, I, I sort of worked there five, six years and thought, you know what, I could probably do this myself, um, which is when I bumped into a chap called Andy. Uh, this is me and him, quite drunk after a networking do in York, um, which is where we started. So Andy had a, a company called Snapshot, which mainly did websites and stuff like that. Um, and my agency, we, we just picked up a job doing LED billboards, and we decided to join forces. And we got our first, that was our first office actually, that was my living room in a flat in York. And then our first proper office was a place called the Phoenix Center, which was a nice little incubator project set up by a woman called uh, Heather Niven, who you may have heard of. Um, it was great. We had space to set up our computers, play around, uh, get clients in and do all meetings and stuff. It was really cool. Then we managed to convince a few clients, enough clients, to give us enough money to hire our first member of staff. It's this lovely chap here. Um, so we didn't pay him very much, um, but he didn't seem to mind. <laughs> it was meant to be here today, so I can say this. Um, but yeah, he, he, he just cracked on with it and we managed to get a little bit of funding for his first few months and then he stayed on with us. Um, that's when we decided to make the jump over to Leeds and we had an office on the calls. So this is me with pretty long hair, just chilling out in the office. Uh, now we have 46 staff, uh, sorry, 37 staff. Um, we've got a nice shiny new office. Um, it's a lot tidier than the one, the first one. And we've got a nice varied team of people, um, all looking very happy there. So what kind of job roles exist in a digital agency? Um, it's really exciting, there's all kinds of things. You can do front-end web development, which mainly focuses on the HTML, CSS side, so how it works in the browser and stuff like that. Uh, Back-end development, which is more databases and APIs, although the lines are blurring between front-end and back-end now. Um, there's, there's digital design, so this is using Photoshop and Sketch and things like that. Digital marketing is, is a really big thing these days. If you're good at Instagram and Facebook, you might be able to pick up a good career in this, in this sector. Uh, quality assurance. There's agencies and leads dedicated to QA and testing, um, which I would recommend. SEO, so search engine optimization. So this is trying to get to the top of Google. Project management. Um, every project needs project management, unfortunately. Um, some projects run more smoothly than others, but you have to manage expectations and, and figure out client issues quickly. 
And then there's account management, which is more of the sales side, keeping the client happy and, and getting them to buy the things that you want them to buy. So what's the work like? What is it that you actually end up doing if you work in a digital agency? Well, it, it can be anything really. Um, it could be a digital transformation project, it could be an, a, an app to unlock a, a car with, uh, just with your phone. It could be um, anything you could imagine using digital really. Uh, we've worked with a load of cool brands. Uh, there's a load of agencies in Leeds that have worked with all sorts of companies. So I'd rec definitely recommend um, either getting in touch with us or them and seeing what kind of work they've been up to. So I'm just going to take you through a few kinds of projects you might end up working on. So this is a cool little game that we built. Um, so this is for a client called City Park. Um, one of our designers had this idea to sort of mock up a, a game using WebGL. Um, if you haven't tried using WebGL, there's loads of great tutorials on the internet, uh, but you can basically use the full power of your graphics card in a web browser. Um, so if you're interested in game development, that might be something to have a look at. Um, this is another campaign that we did. Um, this is for Perform, this is their next gen campaign. So this is the top 50 uh, up and coming footballers. This is quite a cool project because it actually uses WebGL as well to create this sort of um, tunnel effect. You get this sort of depth perception sort of thing. You could be building websites. So this is a, the Leeds Bradford Airport website. So you could end up doing car parking booking engines or flight lookup APIs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've also done some cool work with a local energy company that have just started up called Yorkshire Energy. Um, so a project like this would incorporate uh, lots of API calls to figure out what your account balance is, entering your, um, your meter readings and all the kind of checks and stuff that go around that. We also have a street lighting project. So if you can believe it, street lights are now connected to the internet. Um, so we have hundreds of thousands of these with little radios in, and they talk to each other um, and us uh, over radio. Um, we basically can control when they're on, when they're off. We can change the dimming profiles of them to save councils money on their electricity bills. We can monitor kilowatt hour usage. Uh, things, energy saving tactics like turning every other one off after at sort of 3 a.m. or whatever, um, and this is really cool. So this is one of this is the project I've been working on for two year, two years, and I'm not actually allowed to describe all the details of it. So when anyone asks me to do a talk, I just want to talk about this. I'm not really allowed, but this is the cool one. Um, and we've got lots of visualization tools that you can use to sort of see where all the lights are, and sort of report faults. It's kind of like. Um, like ticketing Jira for streetlights almost. So when there's a fault, you can figure out if you can send an engineer there. So that's, that's one side right on the techie side, and right through on the other side. Um, these are really fun, these like little interactive campaigns. So we built this quiz. This was before Donald Trump got into power and we really didn't want him to be uh, the president. So we built this campaign to try and beat Donald Trump, essentially. Um, we got loads of hate mail for this, you would not believe. Like, um, they were saying, oh, Donald Trump never said this. Um, but in the background, we've actually got the actual recordings of him saying all these things, so, yeah. This is a cool little campaign we did around um, cycling. So, I really do like projects like this because it involves every aspect of a digital agency. So, while it is quite design-led, there is a lot of programming that goes on in, in making the animations interactive, so you, you end up having a nice, diverse team working on a project like this. Now it's got all sort of background sound effects and stuff like that as well. So, why should you get involved in tech? Well, I think you should get involved in tech because I think it's the most exciting industry. It's, it's always changing, there's always new things to learn, and you can make basically anything that you can dream of. 
The work varies every day. You never wake up and think, oh, I don't really fancy going to work today because there's always something new and different to do. You get really good transferable skills. No employer is going to turn you down because you've learnt more about how to use a computer in a really cool way. So, how do you get started then? So, there's a number of ways that you can get started. Um, I just want to talk through a few of them. Our designers recommended um, using these two services, the Skillshare and Superhigh. Um, these are online courses that you can use to, to brush up on your design and project management skills. Um, Superhigh's got some great courses on there and I definitely recommend checking them out. Um, you can learn at home, you can do this in your own time and just, just work through each, each course. If you're more interested in sort of front-end development, I would de definitely recommend this, uh, this product called Dash. It basically gives you little things to try and build and it takes you step by step through each thing. So we often get interns in and uh, plunk them in front of this for a few days and they really get to grips with it and they really find it really engaging. Um, a lot of them go home and then they work on it in their own time and build their own projects or build websites for family members and stuff. I don't know if you remember, some of you, if you are in digital already, back in the day you'd, you'd build websites for family members or like you'd, um, you're in a band so you build your band's website and stuff like that. So these kids that are coming in, they really do enjoy picking up enough skills to be able to go and build things for their, for their like, close friends or family members and stuff like that. And it really, it really is the best way of learning, learning by doing, I would definitely recommend. Now, this sounds like a bit of a joke, but every job that you come across, you'll end up wrangling with some horrible spreadsheet. If you're doing um, an event or you're doing any kind of bug tracking or anything, it's, you're bound to fall into a trap of ending up with some sort of awful Google Sheet. If you can master this, you are gold dust in the workplace. You can go and work anywhere. You don't even have to work in tech. If you, if you are that person that can make Excel sing, then you are absolutely golden. Yeah, that's probably one of the best transferable skills. It sounds really boring, but it doesn't matter what you do, you'll end up in Excel at some point. If you're more interested in more of the back-end side of things, so you might be more analytical-minded, you don't really have too much of a design eye, perhaps, I'd really recommend checking out Laracasts, and it really helps you build up your skills around um, building databases, building applications. It's very Laravel focused, but there's other ones that, that cater for the Rails community as well. I definitely recommend having a look at that. Go out and make something, build something, try it. Visual Studio Code is given away for free by Microsoft. It's a great text, um, text editor IDE. You can make cool stuff. You don't have to spend loads of money. Go grab a copy of Sketch. Um, Sketch is a great design tool. Um, you can design all sorts of stuff in there. Definitely recommend going out and, uh, and giving that a go. Now, I don't know if we have time for questions. I don't know exactly how it's going to work in this silent disco, but... I'll try and give you a... If I maybe this, maybe this will on. work, if I can give Thank you that. Thank you very much, <laughs> yeah. So, if anyone wants to ask me a little bit about how I got into tech or how they should get into tech um, or anything else, just stick your hand up, Josh will bob round and we'll, uh, we'll do a quick Q&A. Yeah. I'll try and, do, try and be a runner for the microphone. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. There you go. Um, so, were you worried about setting up your own company? How did you learn about the entrepreneurial side of all that? Um, basically learning through failure. So. Um, at first, we underquoted massively on a project that we, we overpromised. So, yeah, we slogged away for three months on an e-commerce project that uh, we, should have, we should have really wrapped up much sooner than that. So you, you sort of learn by doing, really. Um, yeah, it was pretty terrifying, to be honest, quitting a, a, paying, a paying job to, to be basically on nothing and managing your own finances like that is fairly terrifying. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know, just... If you, if you don't have any dependents and you don't have any pets, you just take the jump, I guess, and live off pot noodles for a bit. Any more questions? No, okay, brilliant. Well, oh. oh, one more. There you go. 
just interested what tech stack do you use or, or which ones do you prefer? Uh, generally we use React on the front end and then we've got a, a uh, PHP stack, so Nginx um, uh, PHP essentially. Uh, our hosting infrastructure is Kubernetes at the moment, so lots of little containers stack on top of it on AWS. Brilliant, okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, James is gonna be hanging around for a bit after. Please feel free to grab him if you don't wanna ask any more questions in front of the audience. Um, we, we first met through events um, and we got chatting about the whole tech stack. I think even if you don't want a job at Parallax, it's really good to chat to them about what they do because a lot of their projects are very varied as James has just, um, just mentioned. And do learn Google, Street, uh, Google Sheets because there's a whole scripting engine <laughs> that you can get stuck into and it'll teach you loads of stuff about programming along the way. Yeah, so definitely. Um, but can you join me in thanking James Hall? Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers.